Welcome to the Macmillan Handlebar Simulator Assembly Video. I designed and built this unit to race the TT Isle of Man right on the edge number one. After a brief introduction, I'll show you how to put one of these units together. First off, this unit has to be 100% fun, 100% reliable, and 100% competitive. On the fun part, I just got to stop right here and say that all motorcycle simulation games need handlebars. Wheels and joysticks are just not what really does it. Us motorcyclists, we need the bars. We don't have to think, we just do it. It makes it so much more fun. And that's why I built them. Fun-wise, I'm having a lot of fun. And so on the uh, reliability of it, uh, this unit I built a year ago. I uh, haven't done a thing in six months to any of the changing the position of anything. I've just ridden it. It has well over 1,600 miles on it, according to the awards. I'll show them here. On the Tourist Trophy race, I'm number 20 on the Steam leaderboards with a six lap time of 97 and 44 and a few tenths. On the Steam leaderboards in the time attack, I'm number 33 with a lap time of 15.30 and a few tenths. Now, I'm going to zoom in on the machine here, and uh, I'll put one together for you. Thank you for watching. And uh, get ready, get set, let's go. The first part that I'm going to put on is the main backbone. It's a 2 by 3 8 inch wall square tubing. It's got all kinds of rib nuts, which are commonly called blind fasteners. I don't use uh, nuts on the back side of this because it would simply not be doable without rib nuts. So I'm going to put it on the fixture here. The purpose of a good fixture is to hold everything in place so that everything works properly and that the fit and function and assembly goes smooth. Now on this fixture you'll notice there are thumb screw like things which are stove bolts. Those are already set so that different parts go on here without adjustment. It lines everything for me. The second thing that goes on this simulator is a device that holds a PlayStation 5. Excuse me, a PlayStation 4. It will hold a 5, but we're using a 4 on this one because it's for the Isle of Man 1. It just slips on here. The main frame is clamped in and the top is on. You can slide it around this way. It hits its stops right here, which gives it a front alignment. Over here, the adjustments give it the side alignment. So we're ready to put bolts in that thing. I have three bolts across here because with three of them, it's sure not to move. Now this is all bolted together. And you can see inside of it a little bit here. The actuators are what control the triggers on the PS4 controller. That right there would be the front brake and this one here would be the throttle and so forth. Now let's install this bright red controller in here. It's got elevators on the front of it to level it. I've already done that. 
Looks pretty good there. Put this little piece on here. It's got holes, etc., cut in it so that it fits on here after the box is put on. Arranging all these rib nuts where they'll accept the hardware is half the trick in designing a unit such as this. The way I try to lay it out is for convenience and quickness. You can get the controller out of the unit once it's completely assembled quite easily. At this point, we'll just get things up and running here. And now, with a little Allen wrench, I had this screwed down just to keep it out of the way. Swing this over, and it's the controller for the rear brake, which works this joystick backwards. It's got a little pedal, paddle rather, and it, there's your brake. So the units in here, I've already pre-calibrated and adjusted it so that you can see how quickly it goes together. And it'll give you a view. Let's give it a little bit of front brake here. There's some brakes. Let's give it a bunch of throttle if you're gonna win races on this thing. There you go. Might want to hit the rear brake pretty quick. All right, we'll move on to the next section, which is the steering stem and assembly. We even have a steering damper we'll show off here in a little bit. So bear with me. I'm going to kind of stand in front of the old camera here and show off a thing that you probably see on your bicycle. It's the fork triple clamp off of a bicycle. This one here has clamps on it so you can take it off the steering stem or the stanchion tubes of a bicycle. That's your, you could have a front wheel down there. So I robbed those parts off of forks because they're clampable. It means I can put them on an inch and an eighth tubing, which is the same size as a bicycle's steering tube. This long cylinder here really is a steering head on aluminum from Nova Cycles. Nova Cycles is a great supplier of all, ma all manner of bicycle parts and reamers, etc. You do have to ream this thing to set the bearings and face it which I've already done. Now, this setup of six black straps on here really are big zip ties. And there's a device on here that we can tighten down on those zip ties, one on each side. That's the steering damper. That, that applies a little drag to it and feels like a really silky bearing. That feels good, but sometimes you need a little drag. This thing will lock down if necessary, and stiction uh, is what you want to avoid. This one's low in stiction. There are some other things on here, but we'll get to them as we go through this assembly. Let's get these things on the main frame. Here is another uh, stove bolt that I use for an adjuster, and there's two of them. Those two determine the level of the steering tube. They're preset. I'll get add a little more info in a minute. Let's get this thing on here. Getting pretty close. This connector is a silicone mock-up just for tooling. Looks like it's pretty lined up to me. Let's get some screws hardware in these bolts. It looked like it went together in two seconds. Now then. Let's take note here because we've got this unit on here. And do a little pressure down there and get it seated. I've got these two handy little blocks of machined to a certain height uh, tooling blocks and I'm going to slide them under the here and here and 
they are calibrated so I know it's true let's lock down the bolts should I need to adjust those little elevators let me run it up and down to any given point I want so this one's true and it's bolted down let's align the steering assembly to the frame at this point so let me get a fixture here that uh, this handy little thing that has all the holes and correct placements already established I put it on there and it's a tooling fixture to true everything so here we go let's put it on to be self-explanatory this little guy slides in here and centers up on the steering bearing a little piece of angle here a clamp on the bottom click um, click the purpose of this little fixture on the end here is to get everything this away everything level I want to point out that my spring holders where a spring will attach here and here has this little bent thing I'll get to that a little later but it needs to come straight through here so that tells me that this alignment is good this alignment for the spring attachment once again is good and uh, I'm ready to go to the next step after this these little pins drop in holes keeps everything in check we previously used this little tooling fixture to establish the alignment of things the holes in the tubes go through a hole in the square tubing does the same thing just got to know where to make sure everything's right let's go forward as you can see I've got the spring bar mounted and it's uh, ready for the springs we know the alignments are all good we know the holes are all good so our locations are perfect let's go forward to install a spring on this machine here's how you do it come on in here put it right in through that this little guy wiggles through wiggles all the way through like that look at that wiggles through there that guy makes a crook and comes around that way it does not interfere with this spring I turn it like that when I use the device okay let me hook up this spring it's got a little hanger comes right on down here hooks on those handy little eye hooks there nonetheless now we have a everybody's hooked up on springs you can hardly turn it it's got quite a bit of resistance it's the feedback you know similar to a forced feedback on a controller wheel of some kind but each spring on each side provides the first step of the of the of the force and the second and the third so you have the beginning and the middle and the end of turning your handlebars either way there's a lot of adjustability in all of this but this is the setting that I find to be the most suitable handlebars the kind of bars that I use in this on this machine are stoker bars like you see on a tandem you can extend the length in and out for a longer reach I also added on basically these are carriers for a cell phone but they were so stout I thought they were great for this purpose lets me do some trimming out don't you know and for the controls on here these are Avid 2.0 levers they uh, have a little adjuster in here for in and out so you can change the position of the cable pivot uh, according to the kind of brakes you want to use it gives lets them 
out at the top they're real snappy down lower down here they're uh, slower but a little mushier I like the snappy ones the thumb screw makes them changes the cable position I'd put a little screw here so I could do a finer job of adjusting the reach so basically I could set this where I want to and accommodate the kind of cable pull the uh, the quicker it is the more cable it pulls the, the more power you have the less cable it pulls now over here is a Tomasoli throttle it's quite a fine little throttle and I put a spacer in here to take the slack out of it because I can't stand rattling throttles even the best you need to do something about that if you don't want to rattle uh, nonetheless I really enjoy that uh, Tomasoli throttle these grips are the greatest I'm liable to put them on my motorcycles I've owned 18 motorcycles this is the only game I play and it's a good motorcycle game once again and to be redundant uh, this little truing fixture right here once I get it trued I drop these in a pen right through the holes that I machined in all this and I use these pins for alignment from that point forward. Don't need this anymore. Don't need the old tooling fixture anymore. Makes it real easy to get this where you want it. And while I'm at this right here I want to point out that one thing is handy about both of these little rods is you can use them to gun sight and get your handlebars right on center. Look at there. Pretty slick way of centering the handlebars. Let me tighten them down while I'm right there. Just exactly like a bicycle because it is a bicycle part. Two screws and it's clamped down. I can take these little rods out of here. I got handlebars that do this number now. Look at that. These guys here have got their own resistance. Look how fudgy they are. Let's take all of the dampening off of this. Release the dampers fully. Watch how this guy boings. Put some dampening back on it here. I get a kick out of that part of it after I put one together a little bit to feel the dampening. Yep. When you adjust the head bearings on the steering tube on this guy, you do it just exactly like a bicycle within a headset steering tube. You can see a pretty good view of how the springs are arranged on here. And again, you have the middle middle spring and the ends and the beginnings beginning middle and end that simulates the back pressure I find that to be a great setting it takes a little force let's take a look at a completed handlebar simulator there's one behind me let's take a look let's take a look at the throttle mechanism when I turn the throttle, it pulls a cable. Comes on through here, turns this. We have a spring, an actuator goes through, works the PS4 controller, stops. There's a stop inside, it keeps it from crushing the controller. And it only takes a little bit to get it in motion. I can adjust the turn of the throttle from about 10 millimeters down to about four. So I had it set at about five millimeters of rotation at the throttle. Let's look at the rear brake here. When you pull the lever, it moves the actuator. The actuator pulls the joystick back. It gives you full brake. I use a couple of uh, automotive, automatic transmission fluid return lines for elastomers they seem to elast for a long time they don't get much stress on them due to the arrangement the arrangement here determines how much cable is pulled you'll notice there's like a little cam on this oh yeah it takes a while to figure that out least spring possible and the 
there's quite a few little pivots through experimentation I found the sweet spot again there's adjustability in the avid levers to make it snappy or make it soft regarding the control cables on this unit I've used different pieces of hoses to keep the cables where I want them to be where they don't flop around and hit the springs nothing hits anything it's very sweet the front brake actuator is cable operated just like the rear brake cable comes down comes through there's some adjustment here in and out on the elastomers when I pull the front brake the elastomers come together that gives you the feel right where they touch is where the brake starts on the game in and out to adjust where the, it starts in relation to the game if you call that calibration lots of adjustment here for this particular unit the lightest possible springs a stop here some cable writings again we use common automotive hoses to help stabilize the cables so they don't interfere all is good here what I'm looking at now is where it connects to the PS4 controller for the left and the right turning of the game machine of this simulator. I know you can barely see the PS4 in here. This is a black one in this unit. This is a pretty complicated piece of hardware right there. In the future, I'm going to replace it with something like this that's cast or even 3D molded. I'm against plastic, but this may be the place for something like that. This little guy hooks on top of the of this of the uh, PS4 controller and slides on there. Works pretty good. It's just too floppy. Needs to be stiffer. Work perfect. While I'm here, it's worth mentioning that there are stops on the sides here that are adjustable, so that this doesn't go too far this way or that way, and ruin the controller the brake system here it has stops it doesn't ruin the controller the front brake it has stops built in so that that little black bar down there does not crush the controller same for the throttle setup all the stops on the head of this thing prevent damage to the controller and allow you to set everything exactly where you want the stops so there's no free play in anything just like a motorcycle you just don't want to have to think about it to go fast designed to go back and forth and up and down a couple of places to put your feet we have knee pads on here these guys here I use two of them on each side this whole assembly right here slides back and forth so you can get your knee pads where you want them in relation to your handlebars. Let me put this back on here. So that's how I assemble the McMillan Handlebar Simulator for racing the TT Isle of Man right on the edge number one. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And thank you for watching the Macmillan Handlebar Simulator Assembly video. For more information, check out my other YouTube videos or visit my website www.paulmcmillan.com forward slash handlebar.